photosynthesis rate can be limited by different factors, referred to as limiting factors. These limiting factors are warmth, light, and also carbon dioxide. We can draw graphs showing how the rate of photosynthesis is affected by these different limiting factors. In terms of limiting factors, you need to be able to extract and interpret graphs of photosynthesis rate involving limiting factors for your exam. When plotting graphs of limiting factors, we have the limiting factor on the x-axis and the rate of photosynthesis on the y-axis. The limiting factor, for example, light intensity goes on the x and the rate goes over on the y-axis. If we don't have specific data on the rate of photosynthesis, we may plot aspects that are influenced by the rate. An aspect that is influenced by light intensity could be the number of bubbles of oxygen produced per minute from pondweed. So you need to be able to plot and draw appropriate graphs selecting appropriate scales for the axes. So how do we do that? Plot a graph of the results of an investigation into the effects of temperature on the rate of photosynthesis and describe any trend. So step one, carefully read the question and identify the command words. This question is using the command words plot, asking you to plot a graph, and describe, asking you to say what you see. How do we start this task? So for step two, identify the type of graph needed. Discrete data uses bar charts and continuous data uses line graphs. So to look at the type of graph needed, we need to look at the independent variable, which is the variable that was changed in the investigation. In this case, it's temperature, and that's continuous data. This means we're going to plot a line graph. Step three, draw the axes and mark out a linear scale for the line graph. A linear scale just means marking off at regular intervals. Marking off at every bold line within the graph paper is generally a good idea. Step four, label the x-axis with the independent variable and work out a scale based on the number of marks and the range of data. So remember that the independent variable is temperature and the range goes from 10 to 50, going up by 10 each time. Therefore, a suitable scale would look something like this. Don't forget to label your axes with the units as well. Step five, repeat the steps with the y-axis and the data from the second column. The y-axis normally has the dependent variable plotted on it, which is the variable that you measure, in this case, the number of bubbles per minute. Here's a good scale that we can use. Again, don't forget to label your axis. Step six, plot the values on the graph using an X. It's good practice to plot the points with an X because it makes it clear where the actual point is intended. Step seven, draw a line or a curve of best fit. At this stage, you should have a look at your graph and evaluate the shape to determine if the X's form a straight line or a curve. In this case, a curve is suitable. Step eight, interpret the graph and describe any trend. You should describe the trend by mentioning what happens to the dependent variable as the independent variable changes. So we may say that as temperature increases, the number of bubbles released per minute or the photosynthesis rate also increases up to 40 degrees C, at which point the rate of photosynthesis decreases. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE biology course. See you there.